This is 2.4. We're going to learn the product and quotient rules today. Now here's a huge no. I mentioned this in my last video. So a note is the derivative of a product does not equal to the product of the derivatives. So even though we have the derivative of a sum equals to the sum of the derivatives, we don't have it for the product. And I'm going to show you with an example. Not a super fun example, but it does the job. So we know from last section that that's 2x. But what if... I write x squared as x times x. So that's the product of two variables. Does that equal to product of the derivatives? Well, what's the derivative of x? That's 1. And what's the derivative of x? And they are not the same. Nope. It's not equal. So what does it equal to? Well, it's, we're going to call this the product rule. So the product rule is much easier than the quotient rule, and it's easy to remember too. So what we have here is if we have the der derivative of a product, you take you copy one function, and then you take the derivative of the other, and then we flip flop. Then we take the the other function, the g of x, and take the derivative of the other. Um, I use most people don't write it like this. I mean, most people will write it like this. This is easier to write right now, but I use this notation for a great reason, as you'll see, especially when we get to the quotient rule. So it's either or. So let's look at an example. So what we want is y prime. And again, I don't like to write the this prime notation on the polynomial like that. So I like to write it like this. The first times the derivative of the second plus. So you can also think of a product just like the exponential rules. The product is the sum. And you'll see the quotient will be the difference with a little bit more. And now we flip-flop them. We will have to wrap it. The reason why I really like this notation, like this should be your first step, especially when you do quotients. It's just so much easier not to make a silly error using this notation. So now we're just, oh yeah, we're copying that. We're doing it. It's all right there, right above it. We don't have to look way over here. It's just further for your eyes to wander to make a mistake. So that's times 6x minus 0. We copy this, and that is 10x the fourth. So again, if you started here, it's just harder to see that you set it up right. So again, it really cuts down on silly errors. Let's go ahead and just multiply it out first. And then see if we have any like terms. Oh yeah, we have x to the 6. Maybe we'll go in descending order. We can stop there. We can factor out an x if we like to. But we'll just stop there. We don't, we're not doing anything with it. Here's the rule. This is the derivative of a quotient. So it starts at the bottom, and then you take the derivative, derivative d dx of, and it's subtract. Remember, quotient, subtract, product, add, and then we just flip flop them. And here's where it's a little bit different. And then we divide by dx quantity squared. Again, I much prefer this notation and for good reason. And then you also, you just get better at notations when you're always using this notation. We can think of this as the bottom times the deriv derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. Say it out and write it out in words and then divide by the bottom squared. Again, the order matters here because of the minus. Up here, you can mix up f and g. It doesn't matter because it's a plus. It's bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times derivative of the bottom, and then divided by bottom squared. 
there's some students have taught me high D low minus low D high divided by low squared, something like that. Let's do an example. And don't forget to square that. Again, I, I think this helps you check it because you can see inside out inside the derivative out, like you can kind of check, oh yeah, these are the same, these are the same. Okay, now let's do the work. I'll go ahead and multiply these and then try to clean it up. This is two x to the fourth. Factor out that x squared, but nothing else simplifies. Oh, back up there, if we want to show that formula works for the product, we know that's 2x. We write this as a product. That would be x d d x of the second one. They're both the same, so it doesn't matter. Plus x times d d x of x. And the derivative of x is 1. And we the formula works for that case that we showed. This is the one most common that people use the quotient rule, but they don't realize that they don't need to use the quotient rule. Do you realize if you do, this is the one most people make a mistake on when they do the quotient rule too, by the way. This is why we don't need the quotient rule because it's three times x to the minus one, which is minus three x to the minus two, okay? Let's use the quotient rule on this one. Okay, so we make sure that x3, 3x three, three, get flopped, flip-flopped, and then let's do the math. So the derivative of 3 is 0, so this is x times 0, and that's usually where the place most commonly people miss. And then that's times 1, 0 is 0, and this, that's a minus 3, is minus 3 over x squared. and we get the same thing. Okay, we'll be using this throughout the rest of the chapter. So again, this is one where you really wanna practice so you can do the quotient rule and do the algebra, making sure that you're getting it right. It's the most frustrating though, trying to simplify and get what the book has as an answer or checking your answer somewhere else.